It would be a sin to count out the Blue Devils in 2022. Central Connecticut State looking to torment the rest of the league and get back to the NEC tournament for the first time since 2018. Joining us today here at Media Day, we have interim head coach Kerry Reeves and junior guard Forever Toppin. Ladies, thanks so much for joining us here today. Thank you for having us. Appreciate it. Great to have you. And, and, and coach, let me start with you. This is, is year two now in, in your position, um, you know, but with the pandemic and everything, do you feel settled in? Have you been able to fully implement everything and, and push the team in the direction that you're looking to get them? Yeah, I think most um, more so than last year, we had a traditional preseason uh, this year, as opposed to last year. Um, we were able to come up in August for three weeks and getting players back on campus to kind of do the traditional summer school aspect of it. So we've had a good preseason and we're able to, you know, kind of carry over some of the um, principles that we were able to implement last year. So but it's nice just having more time on the court with the team. So yeah, I think it's um, it's just a nice carryover from last year um, into this year and uh, it's been going pretty smoothly. So very happy about it. Coach, let's drill down on that a little bit more because last year you talked about you wanted to run a uh, spread the floor and attack style versus a screening style offense and that that transition style was taking some time to implement. Mm -hmm. Have you seen kind of that growth in the team has, how is that transition going? And is that the kind of offensive style we're going to see from the Blue Devils this year? Yeah, most definitely. I think it, like I said, you know, in the past, it's a very exciting way to play, you know, getting up and down the floor and, and scoring baskets and just giving our players an opportunity to just play the game and not do a lot of thinking. And I think we work on our transition offense um, every day in practice and forever can speak more to the uh, conditioning and the transition style of how we try to do things. But yeah, we're looking forward to, to kind of taking that same mindset into this year. And I think with the addition of the kids that we brought in in this class and with the combination of the kids we have returning, I think it's going to it's um, it's going to be exciting. And we're going to try to look to play that way again. Lots of transition and lots of threes. So, well, you got the perfect young lady to do it because I went through my notes and I found some quotes from you. You talked about how quick forever is. She can go by anyone. And she really stepped up into a scoring role for you last year. But forever, we, I read some notes that talked about. You really want to take on this point guard responsibility. What does that mean to you? And what are your goals in that position this year? Um, I think my main focus is to, like you said, uh, be a true point guard this year. Um, executing the ball, uh, executing plays, getting my teammates more involved. Um, you know, I like to I like to show off my passes and like throw a couple of dimes. So most definitely <laughs> um, this year I do get to show that side of me. Um, Last year, I was placed in a position where I had to, you know, give a little bit more for my teammates and uh, for, the, for, the, for my team, like scoring wise. But this year, I actually do get the uh, chance to show a two point guard. The rumor has it you have the goal of getting 12 assists in a game. That's the record for the Blue Devils. Is that true? Yes, that is. All right. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> I know Coach likes hearing that, but uh, for forever, let, let me ask you about last year, the most improved player in the NEC. You made a, a huge jump from, from one year to the next. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Take us behind the scenes. What kind of went into that, that jump, you know, in the off season that led to the production we saw on the court? Um, so uh, I think it started more like beginning of the season. Um, unfortunately we lost a, a couple of big players for us. Uh, a couple of our starting five, um, you know, huge, huge scores. Um, so set us back a little bit. Um, I had a conversation with coach and, you know, she needed a little bit more from me. So um, I just put myself in a position to provide that as much as possible. And that was um, scoring a little bit more, which is fine with me. Um, I don't mind it, but, you know, I'd like to get my other teams involved. And, but um, it was cool. I, I, I like scoring, but, <laughs> Uh, it is what it is. I guess I got a chance to show that, you know, I can score uh, at, at any at anywhere on the floor, kind of. And um, I guess I got a chance to show, like, my work and what I've been doing. So. And, and Coach, you know, Forever kind of mentioned it a little bit. Your team started out 2-2 two and two last year before there were injuries and pandemic and, and, and all that. So you had some momentum when you had the full squad together at the beginning of the year. Uh, do you think you can establish that momentum at the beginning part of, of this conference season and ride that to, to make appearance in this year's tournament? 
Yeah. Um, yeah. I think with the initial question you asked about running the transition style and being able to implement it from last year to this year, I think the understanding happened last year. Now it's about putting it all together and into place on the floor. And, you know, we were two and two and our goal is to score 75 points or more in each game. And I think we had done a pretty good job of that. So that's still our goal. And, you know, with forever's ability to pass the ball and ability to get her teammates involved along with all of our other point guards, um, I think we're going to be able to achieve the goals that we set forth last year and moving into this year. All right. For more questions for the blue devils, let's bring in Dan Gardella. Thanks Craig coach. What is the most important part of talking to your team with these newcomers when it comes to instituting that, that culture that you want to instill? Well, I think it's our, our returning players that were able to run it last year, having conversations with our kids, um, setting the standard of what kind of shape we want to be in. We want to be in great condition. It takes commitment on the court, in the weight room. Um, and I think it's about doing every single day. Um, we, you know, the addition of six players, we're trying to intertwine six new personalities and skill sets. Um, and like I said, being able to come in August, I think it's been a little bit easier as we started the full on practice schedule this year. But I think the returning players have just done a fantastic job of, of melding with the six new kids that we have coming in this year. Now, you've had a, a bunch of different coaching jobs, assistant coaching, recruiting coordinator, bunch of titles. How do you feel that that experience allows you to have a pulse, an idea of what each coach is thinking at any given point of the season? Well, I think, you know, being it's hard to think that I've been coaching for 25 years now at different places. And in my 15th year at Central, I'm very fortunate to, to have the job that I have. Um, I have the best job on the face of the planet. So I think, um, you know, we're really looking forward to a competitive season um, in the conference. And I'm so excited to get every to see everybody get a chance to play a full schedule where last year was so disjointed and moving forward as a conference, I'm just looking forward to seeing like everybody implementing what they wanted to do last year, but kind of was cut short. Um, I'm just, I'm really excited about, you know, this upcoming season. And forever, obviously most improved player. You, like you said, you had an opportunity to really showcase your skills, but everybody as a freshman wants to come in and produce immediately and have those minutes but it wasn't there for you. What goes into your thought process as a freshman or even as a sophomore when you're not getting as many minutes to motivate yourself to continue to say, if I keep doing the right things, I'm going to find some time on the court. Um, I just have amazing coaches behind me, you know, letting me know like my time is coming. I think uh, I did an amazing job with uh, being patient and understanding that, you know, a lot of things don't go your way, right? off the jump, like right coming in as a freshman, but you just have to work for it, keep putting in the work and it'll pay off eventually. So I think I just was very patient and um, I took, you know, I, I attacked the opportunity I had. Yeah, trust the process. That's a great job. Great answer. <laughs> all right, and forever before we say goodbye, we have uh, a question that we're asking all our student athletes here. We wanna see who guesses closest to the actual number. So uh, the question is, we wanna know, how many combined three-point field goals were made by the entire Northeast Conference last season? All the players in the NEC. Now, to give you a hint, Central Connecticut State had 120. I'm going to go close to... Uh, uh, nine. I'm going to go with 950. That's it. Coach Reeves, forever, thank you so much for joining us, and best of luck to the Blue Devils this season. Great. Thank best you. Best of luck, you guys. Best of luck. All right, we'll have more NEC Women's Basketball Virtual Media Day presented by Franklin Group coming up right after this.